Coming up on Network Africa. Cameroon declares public holiday to mark the inauguration of President Paul Bia for his seventh term. The United Nations Security Council considers lifting sanctions of Eritrea. And the World Health Organization ships over 100 million yellow fever vaccines to Ethiopia. President Paul Bia has been sworn in for a seventh term. The 85-year-old who has ruled the country for 36 years pledged to uphold the integrity and unity of the country. The government also declared a public holiday to mark the inauguration. It comes a day after gunmen kidnapped at least 79 students and three others, including the principal in Vimenda. No group has said it carried out the kidnapping and the government blames Ambazonia separatists who want to create an independent state in the English-speaking region. Meanwhile, a massive search operation is underway to rescue the people kidnapped from the Menda Secondary School on Monday. The government and English-speaking separatists have been accusing each other of carrying out the kidnapping. Some students who witnessed the abduction describe hiding under their beds as the hostage takers ransacked the building, selecting which children to take. The governor of the region, Adolphe Lillet Lafrique, has visited the school. Anglophone activists had called for a boycott of all school in the west of Cameroon until their demands were met. They say the education system favours the majority French-speaking population and discriminates against English speakers. They have taken students from different dormitories, both boys and girls, to the number of 79 students with the three teachers, giving a total of 82. Despite what uh, happens here, the state government will not surrender. We are going to make sure the students, the people that were abducted are brought back to the classrooms. Measures are being taken by the security men in that regard. Expert Olade Nde Ario to discuss more on this. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good afternoon. This kidnapping of these students is very similar to what we had here in Nigeria with the Chibok girls, although no group has claimed responsibility of this this time. What do you make of all of this? Well, um, Boko Haram uh, situation was uh, born out of a religious fight, so to say. They wanted to create um, a nation of theirs where they want to rule using Islamic uh, laws. This time around, it's a different ball game because the children in the Bamada school, uh, the English-speaking part of Cameroon, they, they, there was no issue except the fact that there's been complaints over time that the judicial system in that place had not been beneficial to the English-speaking people in Cameroon. And if you remember that uh, the fact that the man, the Paul Bia himself, the president, has been ruling that country for 36 years. There is no other thing that can create this content and the crisis as well as this, if not that. He has practically hijacked uh, Cameroon and the Cameroonians today are his hostages. So it's, it's unfortunate that Africa in this day and age is still contending with a, a lifetime presidency. It's funny you mentioned President Paul Bia. Today is his inauguration mm -hmm. and uh, the government has ordered a public holiday. Isn't this insensitive? Think about what's happening with the abduction as well. If you say it's insensitive, I mean, we are using that word for want of a more, a more, more serious word. Um, it, it's not only insensitive, it's wicked, heartless, and, uh, and senseless. If any of those students taken away were to have been his own child, or the teachers there, any of them, maybe a female one, happened to be his wife, I would, I would love to see if 
we will still have continued with the inauguration. This goes to show you that it does not have the love of the people at heart. It's just doing its own thing for its own benefit and for its own family. Let's talk about the children and the teachers that have been kidnapped now. What should the government do to rescue these people? I don't want to think that government could have organized that kidnap. Okay, it's it's unheard of globally for sitting on to do that. I might still say that uh, there was a deliberate uh, attempt to embarrass Obia, which for me he deserves. What they need to do now is to stop accusing the separatist movement, the Ambazonians, and reach out as much as they can using their intelligence gathering system or mechanism or architecture to identify you know, where the children were taken to and whoever or the community around where they were taken to, engage them. If they ask for money or whatever, let them be paid and then the children are released. They are just victims. Again, they, they are being, their psyche is being badly um, brutalized. That's why those who watch their classmates being taken away had to be hiding under the bed. I wonder what kind of learning they will undertake in the couple of days or weeks to come. Because the trauma will still be very much around them. Yeah. With all that's going on, the Anglophone separatists demanding an independent state called Ambazonia, do you see a repeat of Sudan and South Sudan? It's not impossible. Mm. Uh, they are agitating. Perhaps the next level would be to go into arms uh, uh, combat. Now, if that happens, uh, Cameroon will have no other choice because it will lead to a civil war, loss of life and properties, and of course, the economy of the country will be badly shaken. The only thing is, if they gain their independence, how will it guarantee peace and better life for the people? Because Southern Sudan and the other Sudan, they did that. Today, they're not at peace. And nothing is happening there. But there's no peace, there can't be growth, there can't be development. I only sense. wish that um, common sense will be allowed to play you know, some good roles here. And they can resolve all these things, and the demands are better met, so that they can thrive and then as a country, move forward. And then, of course, it will leave that seat and allow younger elements to come to power. I was the Frederick when he became president. Today, I'm a grandfather. 